Big East opener Tuesday night, an upset of number two UConn. The students are lined up outside the Bradley Center to come inside for Cincinnati and Marquette. Welcome to our coverage of the Big East Conference and here come the students inside the Bradley Center in Milwaukee for the Cincinnati Bearcats and the Marquette Golden Eagles. Hi everybody I'm John Rooney along with Bob Wenzel and after upsetting number two UConn on Tuesday night Bob how does Marquette top that today. I'm not sure they can top it. It was a fantastic evening in Milwaukee. Steve Novak went absolutely bananas. The first time that Marquette has ever played Connecticut their first ever Big East Conference game. Novak the 6'10 forward has 41 points 16 rebounds 11 of 11 from the free throw line. This one from downtown was with nine seconds left on the shot clock. Novak was spectacular and Marquette was feeling it. It was a night to remember for everybody associated with Marquette basketball. And Tom Green has got his team fired up. He loves his star forward. And Steve Novak, the Pontiac game-changing performer. Huge numbers Tuesday night against UConn. He was spectacular and one of the best performers so far this season. Now for the Cincinnati Bearcats. They're off and rolling in this new season. They beat DePaul in the opener. Eric Hicks, he's a rebounder and a shot blocker. It is brand Cincinnati. They go after you. They are aggressive, and Eric Hicks is the man. You can see his strong numbers. If you look at a picture of a power forward in the dictionary, his face is there. While we're watching Eric Hicks and we're watching Novak, how about a couple of point guards? Two freshmen. They're making an impact already on the Big East Conference. Devin Downey and Dominique James. You'll be hearing their names and watching their style funny today. Marquette in Cincinnati. The game is straight ahead. be run new challenges to be met but success of the airport style Big E scholar athlete of the year graduating with a 3.76 GPA and a degree in finance in three years I balance books and basketball a 10 years 100,000 miles advance auto parts for the best parts people and prices we're ready in advance and by Guinness draft stout drink responsibly brilliant With Bob Wenzel, I'm John Rooney inside the Bradley Center in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We're at Al McGuire Court. Big East basketball game two for both Cincinnati and Marquette. And let's check out our star watch. Gave you a little preview of that right at the beginning of our telecast today. And it is the point guards who are quick as a hiccup. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Devin Downey and Dominique James are going to vie for freshman, all freshman honors. You can see the numbers. Both of them very quick. Both of them like to get to the paint and get their teammates involved, but they are also very adept scorers. Two terrific freshman point guards. Devin Downey, 5'10", 175, and Dominique James, 5'11", 175. And let's check out the other players who will join them on the floor today, starting out our game between Cincinnati and Marquette. And certainly the point guards are something to watch, but in the opening game of the season, Jarrell McNeil was able to highlight what Novak was able to do with some aggressive play. We talked about Hicks at the top, but you never know about Kirkland. I mean, here is a guy who can hit from three points, three point range. Armin Kirkland out of Tyler, Texas, averages 9.1 a game. But if he gets hot, he can explore for a big day. Cincinnati brand basketball is get after you. Marquette and Tom Crean, very aggressive. Unlike their first game, Tom Green, you can see his seventh season there. They play Connecticut. They've never played Connecticut before. This is a team that there is a heated rivalry. Andy Kennedy in his first year taking over for Bob Huggins. He is an interim coach. Certainly doing a good job in my estimation at 12 and 2. Cincinnati not missing a beat. Amoroso and Hicks with Ed Corbett, Mike Stevens, and Jeff Clark assigned by the Big East Conference to work this one today. And the tip is controlled by Marquette. And number one, Dominique James. 31 minutes against UConn. He had seven assists, only one turnover on Tuesday night. There's Novak. Terrell McNeil for Chapman. 
And off the three-point miss, nice rebounding positioning by James White. Well, interestingly enough, this is a Big East game with two Midwest powers. These two teams heated rivals in Conference USA. Brian Amoroso with the steal. And here's James all the way in, kicking it out for McNeil. James in the corner. Hits his first shot of the day. He was two for 13 from the field on Tuesday night. In this game, James will be able to shoot over the only player in the league he'll be able to shoot over. We say Downey is 5'10". I was at practice yesterday. He's about 5'7 and a half. Here's Downey all the way in, and he was blocked inside. Ryan Amoroso has a steal, has a rebound there. James trying to explode, and the ball's going the other way. He ended up doing a belly flop at the inline coach. <laughs> And this is what we were talking about earlier how these two have faced each other 23 and 15 the lead for Cincinnati but in the last 15 games Cincinnati has an 8 to 7 edge. Well now they're going to start their heated rivalry as Big East members. They are picked this year 9th and 12th. And they've gotten in the, the great preseason. Midwest on through Conference USA, now in the Big East. Ten years in Conference USA. 14 on the shot clock. That's a three ball for James White. Well, James White is one of those versatile players. Played point guard last year when they had trouble at that position at 6'7". He can jump out of the gym. He can block a shot, too, just like he did there from Jarrell McNeil. Interesting matchup is who guards Novak. Connecticut had real trouble. Armin Kirkland is going to do that in this game. He is much better suited to guard him away from the basket than anyone on Connecticut's team. And that's a three. Six to three, Marquette. This is a loud building. Twenty two on the shot clock and the ball belongs to Cincinnati Dominic James struggled at the beginning of Tuesday's game and has nailed a couple of three pointers right out of the gate today. And here's Devin Downey a freshman from Chester South Carolina Novak interrupting the play James all the way for the dunk. He's ready to play on this Saturday morning in the central time zone. Home court advantage. Crowd gets into it. Cincinnati, however, experienced. And Armin Kirkland has been struggling with an outside shot recently. When he goes well, it's amazing. They have five seniors on this team, do the Bearcats. Very, very unusual in college basketball. And that's a push. Downey with the first foul of the game. Boy, what a young player, huh? He lives in South Carolina, about 30 miles south of Charlotte in Chester, South Carolina, averaged 33 a game in high school. Delightful young man, spoke to him at practice yesterday. He is so happy to be playing all these minutes. Amoroso trying to set the pick on Kirkland. Kirkland is quick enough to stay with Novak on oh the perimeter. My. But Novak didn't waste any time releasing his shot. There's his first field goal today. He is doing his best Dirk Nowitzki look-alike, play-alike situation this year with Steve Novak. White for three. Oh, my goodness. Six for James White, the senior out of Washington, D.C., and the former Florida Gator. Went to Florida, didn't get a lot of minutes there, and transferred to Cincinnati and has had a great career here. Joe Chapman lost it to Downey. Downey in the middle of McGowan for the dunk. McGowan, McGowan. McGowan in his first year here. Junior college player from Miami originally had 20, I'm not kidding, 20 rebounds against DePaul in their last game. You look at McGowan and Hicks inside, they are so tough. How about the this thing? Last touch by James, and James can't believe the ball is going the other way, still questioning the official. Well, Dominique James has not taken that course at Marquette, the negotiation, how to negotiate with an official. That's coming up this semester. <laughs> Now back door, White gets the bank shot as he was able to go over the freshman Jarrell McNeil. Eight Cincinnati for White, made for James, coach. Cincinnati is so experienced, John. You know, I, I mean, you, you talk about Kirkland and White. They've played forever, as has Hicks, McGowan, and, and uh, Downey, new players. But that's a lot of experience. And they have Muhammad coming off the bench, who's experienced as well. 
A foul called on James White, his first, the second on Cincinnati, and we're off and running in Milwaukee. And this is a matchup between James and Downey today. We're going to be following that one closely, and we have more Big East basketball after this. Cincinnati 12 and Marquette 10 with 15.49 left in the first half and Big East Conference play heats up next Saturday from ESPN Plus. The Georgetown Hoyas take on Josh Boone and the Connecticut Huskies. Georgetown and Connecticut Saturday noon Eastern 11 Central from ESPN Plus. Check your local listings. Oh, well, we're off and running for sure today just like Tuesday night right out of the gate. I'm telling you how about Dominique James. Seven points in 31 minutes last time. Now he's got eight points in the first four minutes of the game. Brian Amoroso out front. Steve Novak, the senior leader, and number 22, Jarrell McNeil, a freshman from Hillcrest High School in Chicago. There's Dominique James, a freshman from Richmond, Indiana. Amoroso at the high point. At the high post, he turns around from the point and gets his shot. Very versatile player. Averages about 7.9 points, about six rebounds a game. Hardly ever mentioned in discussions about Marquette is Amoroso. 2-3 zone right here. Marquette having difficulty guarding man-to-man. -man. Switched to zone right here. Eric Sis has not had many touches so far. Kirkland and White doing most of the damage. There he is. Hicks couldn't get the shot down and heavy traffic inside. Novak was watching him. And here's James in the front court now. Amoroso thought about the three ball. How about the skillfulness of the big guys, Amoroso and Novak on this team? Ball fake, they play facing at the three-point line. Kirkland is staying right with Novak. 12 on the shot clock, and a line drive shot won't go. Amoroso keeps the ball alive and a fresh shot clock and takes an early shot. He couldn't get the rebound because Kirkland was there for Cincinnati. But we're going to keep an eye on that Kirkland Novak matchup. Kirkland's 6 8 long. He's able to stay with a 6 10 player on the perimeter. He's got good lateral quickness. A whistle, a hell ball, and the possession arrow favors Cincinnati. So far, Devin Downey is being a little bit ex excitable out here, as you might expect from a freshman. Muhammad comes into the game. He is a great, great shooter. Was the point guard last year. Downey getting a little bit of a talking to. He's been a little over anxious trying to penetrate into traffic. He's had several turnovers doing that so far in this game. A wide open look. Hicks couldn't convert. There was some contact. No whistle. Novak with the rebound. McNeil running the floor. Blocked on the other end by James White. Talk about athleticism on the floor. Cincinnati has not changed. These are Huggins players, his recruits. They run, they jump, they're physical. They try to intimidate with their physicality. And right there, that was an easy block for James White. And White on the other end with a bullet pass for McGowan and the reverse. He doesn't get it. He'll be on the line, though, attempting to score from 15 feet away. McGowan, a first year player, very physical. Junior College, Kilgore, Texas, had big numbers against DePaul in his last outing. 13 points, 20 rebounds against the Blue Demons in the first Big East game for both of those teams. Those are his numbers on the season. Look on the right, 52% from the field, takes mostly shots in the paint. Three for McGowan, and he was placed on the line on Usman Barrow's first foul today. McGowan and Hicks are undersized in terms of height, only about 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, but not in terms of girth and physical play. Both of them long arms, both of them cut players. They play much bigger than their size, don't they? Excellent. Indeed. And here's James working on Muhammad. James for three, had a wide open look, but that went off the backboard and down to Muhammad. White running the floor, blocked by James. Kirkland saved for Cincinnati. Out of bounds, and the ball goes to Marquette. All the officials are going to talk about it. And it's Cincinnati's ball. I thought that was Cincinnati's ball, but the official on the near sideline made the call, and with 25 on the shot clock, Cincinnati will play it in. 
Tom Crean thought it was a travel right here. Excellent fill right here. A block from behind by the little guy. That's aggressiveness. Here's Hicks for the second possession. Hicks drops it in from about seven or eight feet out. I love this kid. He played for the USA in the World University Games in the summertime. Won a gold medal for the U.S. in Turkey. Four Big East players were on that team. Jay Wright from Villanova was the coach. Hicks was a coming out party for him. He got national attention with his play there. Jahai Muhammad, he was a step behind and was called for a foul. He's an excellent three-point shooter, and there is Hicks. If you Google power forward, he's there, I'll tell you. Fitzgerald and Lott in for Marquette. Oddly enough, the thing about Hicks, too, John, he's only fouled out twice in his entire career, and he is always battling around the basket. There's Lott, Lott with a rebound, but the block shot put Cincinnati in motion. White! Oh, he couldn't convert on the other end. And in the scramble, it's Marquette's ball. The lead pass, no, back to McNeil. Touchdown! <laughs> Sixteen fourteen Cincinnati with the lead on the road in Milwaukee. Well if Brett Favre decides to retire Novak might be able to replace him. Hicks with the fade away one hander. He's not disappointing four points an aggressive play inside the lane. That's experience too. A big play happens for Marquette Cincinnati senior comes right back and takes care of things. Dan Fitzgerald. With the pass inside, stuffed by McGowan. Hicks and McNeil tap the ball out of bounds, saving an easy two. And a timeout, and back and forth they go. 11.49 left in the first half, and the Bearcats lead by four on the road. Create your own. Inside 12 minutes to go in the first half, Cincinnati by four. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, Coach, down on the block, there is some blocking going on. <laughs> you got that right. Action in the paint. Block shot. Cincinnati's got five of them already. James White gets his shot blocked inside another block shot. Five by Cincinnati, and Eric Hicks has two. He's got 42 so far this year, now 44. Cincinnati with five block shots, unbelievable. Eric Hicks is third all time in Cincinnati block shots in the history of the school. They've had a few guys who could block shots at that place. Steve Novak, one shot in the first eight minutes of the game. Kirkland doing a good job defensively. Jarrell McNeil commits the foul right out of the timeout. This guy, Kirkland, long, quick, experienced, has played a lot of basketball for Cincinnati. And he has taken the challenge. Novak, as we mentioned, 41 in his last game. That got everyone's attention. Kirkland watched by the freshman McNeil. White is guarded by Joe Chapman, and we have a hold on the block, and that's on Jameel Lott. Now, in that block shot sequence, the last block shot was Lott, who just came off the bench into the game, and now here. He commits a foul his first. Marquette with three fouls and three for Cincinnati. Remember that song, Let's Get Physical? Well, that's what this game is going to be all about in the paint. Oh. And there it is. You asked for it, you got it. And Joe Chapman tied up. And a timeout was called. Marquette is going to have the basketball with 11.21 to go in the first half and an alert play by Chapman. And Big East Conference play heats up next Sunday from ESPN Plus. When freshman phenom Sam Young and the Pitt Panthers head to Louisville to take on Rick Pitino and the Cardinals. That's Pittsburgh and Louisville Sunday, 1 Eastern, noon Central from ESPN Plus. Please check your local listing. How about that game between Villanova and Louisville the other day? The four guard lineup with Jay Wright. Big, big dividends. And Jason Frazier comes in off the bench, goes six for six. A lot of big guys in this league. It's hard, you know, people ask me, well, who are the top players in the league? You got 16 teams. There's at least three all-star guys on each team. So it's going to be tough to make these picks. Fitzgerald in as a 6'9 point guard, one of the more unusual guys in the league. And here's how they started out. Five of six, five of seven. But uh, the defense and the block shots have altered 
Some of that scoring in 18 to 14 Cincinnati. Marquette's ball after an alert timeout called by Chapman and a foul against Cincinnati. That's the fourth on the Bearcats. Well, Cincinnati went 2-2-1 two, two, full court pressure. That's a signature defense of the Bearcats over the years and got a little too handsy on that play. Chad Moore, number one, comes in for Coach Andy Kennedy, who was a star at UAB, later was an assistant coach there, and then coached under Bob Huggins and took over when Huggins stepped down. He was also started his career as a player at North Carolina State, played for Jim Valvano, my freshman coach when I played college basketball. So he's had good tutelage. James out front, 19 on the shot clock. Under 11 minutes to go in the first half. Muhammad and James bouncing around. Lot set the pick, and James took it all the way home. Oh, my goodness. You have got to be kidding me. The use of the bounce. This kid can get anywhere on the floor he wants. Here's Muhammad all the way in. How about that in heavy traffic? <laughs> Is that an answer or what? I went to the practice yesterday for Cincinnati. They only had nine guys, and I'm telling you, it was competitive as can be. And they are competitors, if nothing else. Both these teams are tough as nails. And here's Fitzgerald. Novak from the corner. Counter! If you're Kirkland, you can't get discouraged on a play like that. He played excellent defense. Novak made it anyway. Hicks answers. Eric has seven in the first half. You don't normally guard him that far away from the basket. Adrenaline is flowing in the building. Oh, what about the explosion for Dominique James? Muhammad trying to guard him too closely. You can't do it. You play him that closely, you're going to pay. Here's Muhammad. And off the back iron, the volley goes to James of Marquette. Chapman for three. Too strong, but there's Fitzgerald to Chapman cutting to the basket. And he got the bounce. Oh, oh, what action! Nothing has been decided. 23 all. 9.16 to go and a half. And a long three. Armin Kirkland has five. Oh, my. Oh, my. You talk about games being important. I get the sense in this one that it's personal between these two rivals. Fitzgerald one bounce and then to Novak at the point. And Kirkland isn't giving him any room. Backdoor, the pass for the freshman, and James hit the bottom of the backboard, and he's calling a timeout. Timeout granted. Marquette has used two timeouts on loose ball situations. Sometimes it's a heady play, sometimes not. This game's going to go to the wire, in my opinion, so you're going to need some timeouts late in the game. What action, huh, John? Oh, so Up far. Up and down and, the and, floor, and one when, shot, And when threes. they're not exploding into the lane, then here comes about a 32 or 33-foot uh, three-point attempt. And here's our opening week in the Big East. Oh, my. Check out these results. And the Cincinnati Pittsburgh. dominated on the boards in its game. I'll tell you what. Pittsburgh, Notre Dame was unbelievable. Chris Quinn had 37 in that game. Almost brought them from the dead. And Villanova, Louisville was the big, big game. West Virginia barely getting by South Florida. Jeff Green at Georgetown, co-rookie of the year last year. They beat Providence. That guy is a heck of a player. And Georgetown, of course, have a seven-foot-two center, Roy Hibbert, playing. And Tuesday was the opening game in the Big East. UConn right here at Marquette. Marquette beat UConn 94-79. 15 on the shot clock, and Dan Fitzgerald will inbound. And James, close in, couldn't score. Fitzgerald tried to save, but threw the ball to Cedric McGowan. Here's Downey. And the loose ball in the lane. That's Jamil Locke. The baseball pass to Fitzgerald. Low for Amoroso. The one-hander, an air ball. Out of bounds to Cincinnati. I would hate to be Connecticut's next opponent, LSU, after they lost this one. I'm sure Jim Calhoun's going to get the attention of the number two team in the country. Well, this Jim young Calhoun. man has the attention of his team. He's done a great job in very strenuous circumstances. There are the early turnovers in the game.
Game one more for Cincinnati, but we heard Jim Calhoun's post-game press conference, and he said, concerning effort, we will address that beginning at 1 o'clock tomorrow. <laughs> Shot for three, no good. Amoroso up big and strong on the rebound. And there's Dominic James, head up, looking straight ahead, and Fitzgerald dumps it in for Lott, and Lott is fouled. Well, it's tough to get a shot up inside five feet away from the basket today. Eric Hicks blocked that with his left hand. That's the way you stay out of foul trouble. You go straight up. This is going to be a, a, a foul situation, but not on Hicks. Watch that left hand come from nowhere. It's only about 6'6", but very long arms and a physical specimen. Cedric McGowan committed the foul. That's his first. And for Cincinnati, five team fouls. Marquette has three in the first half. And one more shot coming up for Jameel Lott, a 64% free throw shooter. He's from St. Paul, Minnesota. Ron Allen is in in place of McGowan. He's an interesting story. 6'9", 225. Went to Xavier University in New Orleans. Hurricane Katrina came through. Xavier closed down. NCAA allowed Allen, number 23, to transfer and play immediately for Cincinnati. Long shot from the corner and an air ball. And it's out of bounds to Marquette. Chad Moore missed the rim by plenty. 7.53 left of the first half. Cincinnati is still leading on the road, this time by two points. Twenty six twenty four Cincinnati as we move along in the first half of our Big East game in Milwaukee Wisconsin today. Well Marquette Steve Novak had forty one against Connecticut Kirkland doing a great job Armin six eight quick difficulty getting shots off is Steve Novak they run things for him he's denied he uses screens Kirkland always finds him this one of two shots that he made. He's two for two, but he's only had two shots the entire first half. So Kirkland, despite Novak being perfect, limiting his number of shots. And Novak, our Pontiac game-changing performers on the bench right now. Here's McNeil trying to muscle a shot up. Lot with a follow. And Fitzgerald got a hand on it out of bounds to Cincinnati. Well, Ronald Allen challenged that shot as well. You talk about Ronald Allen, Armin Kirkland, Hicks, White, I'm telling you, they got long guys that can all jump. They challenge shots. They're aggressive going after the ball when it's in the paint. They're not deep in numbers. They put in a lot of minutes, even the bench players. They're deep in heart, I'll tell you that. They are. That's the point. Here's Kirkland and Fitzgerald. And here comes freshman point guard Dominique James in the front court for Marquette. Here is McNeil. He couldn't get a shot away, but kept the ball alive. Dan Fitzgerald now for the Golden Eagles and the steal by Downey. Downey in on James and James commits his first foul. Well, the two little guys doing battle. Downey sat for quite some time because of the early turnovers. Gets back in the game and immediately makes the steal. Great anticipation as well as quickness by the little guy. What do you think? I think he got all ball. So do the fans. Downey makes the first free throw. Dwight Burke, a freshman from Brooklyn, New York, is in now for Marquette. And Downey made both free throws. Downey only 85%. That's a big one, Florida, Georgia. Florida unranked early and now fifth. There's a surprise. Miami a little bit over Maryland. And that big one, Kentucky and Kansas. Kansas, all freshmen playing. And a foul with Dominique James trying to force the issue. His ability to get to the basket is remarkable. A little discussion between coach and point guard. Devin Downey really having a tough time handling James's quickness and strength. Very competitive young man. Both are. James is five for nine from the field, two of three on three pointers. His first free throw of the day gives him 13 points. One of the things about James that's very interesting to me is his ability to handle the ball right and left at full speed. Most guys, when they go to their offhand, slow down a little bit. Not so with this young player. One more for James. 14 for James. 
He had a season high 22 against Nebraska and Lewis. Nice to pressure. Nice trap situation right there that Cincinnati handled well. Kirkland was open and short this time, but followed his shot. Very well done. And here's Allen. That line drive wouldn't go. Novak was in the right spot for Marquette. There's that stutter step and all the way through to Amoroso out to Novak. Even when Novak catches the ball, Bob, there's Kirkland right with him. Amen. You got that right. Can't leave him open for a second. No, uh, Novak has a lot of screens set for him. His teammates very much aware of his ability. James and Hicks got his hands on that one. And Novak commits the foul with Kirkland running the floor. Well, Hicks has been a force defensively in this game, much more so than offensively. Right here, it looks like it's going to be an easy layup. Block shot with the right hand this time. Very adept at using right and left hand is Eric Hicks. As I mentioned before, played for the USA World University Games this summer. Won a gold medal in Turkey. And you talked about Kirkland's size, Bob. Looks like he's dropping waste paper into a basket the way he holds the ball so high over his head <laughs> shooting free throws. Watch this. Uh, he'll put the ball up there, and then it's kind of a line drive free throw. And it works. Pretty accurate, shoots 80% from the charity strike. Both of these teams are good free throw shooting teams. Cincinnati 79%, Marquette 77 coming in today. Cincinnati's third in the country. Marquette 15th in the country in free throw shooting. James has used up the dribble. White Burke. He took one from there last game. And Kirkland's with it. Amoroso is open. And a foul. Muhammad is called. His second. Muhammad got stuck under the basket with the big guys and tried to block out. Tried to get a little physical, but Mr. Stevens saw him explaining his case. Muhammad, junior college player, originally from Plainfield, New Jersey has taken his role as a sixth man to heart. Last year's starter at the, both the point and the two spot. His value to this team is his outside shooting. Farrell and Chapman back in for Marquette, and this is Jarrell McNeil. McNeil had a great, great game, his best of his career so far against Connecticut as a freshman. 16 points, 12 rebounds for a 6'3 player. Yet it took him a while to get going. He was 7 for 22 from the field overall Tuesday night. Two for 12 in the first half, but he was important when it was winning time. Half court track coming up. We'll see how Downey's quickness with the help of Kirkland. No problem at all. As Marquette backed away to pick up Cincinnati in the half court game. But when you play that defense, you know how to attack it. That line driver won't go for Ronald Allen. Chapman. Barrow blocked inside by Allen. Don't come in here unless you want to shoot for the Raptors. This Byron is the seventh a great, block. great job running the middle of the floor. And the seventh block, as you mentioned, for Cincinnati in this game. Allen, the brand new player. White, and that goes off the official, staying in bounds. McNeil into the front court now for the Golden Eagles. And if you are wondering, the official is part of the floor when he's out there. Off the glass and down to Cincinnati. Kirkland cut off by Barrow, and he stepped on the inline. Cincinnati turnover. Nice Six. trap by Marquette. Kirkland got a little bit out of control, had nowhere to go on the baseline. Talk about Andy Kennedy. What a great job he's done with this team, of course. Running the same stuff. He was Bob Huggins' assistant coach, playing the same way that Cincinnati normally plays. 14 straight NCAA appearances for the Bearcats. McNeil in on Downey. Barrow got a hand on it. Chapman keeps the volley going, and there's Darrell McNeil. Right place, right time for that freshman. A lot of white jerseys around the basket for Marquette, and we're tied under four and a half to go in the first half. Downey with an opening. Out of bounds, 
goes to Marquette as Ronald Allen lost the handle on the ball. Allen trying to do a little too much. Took an early three, put the ball on the floor where it's not supposed to go, along the baseline. Two mistakes in a row, met the ones. Dan Fitzgerald, the transfer from Tulane. Out of the point now for Marquette. McNeil open from the free throw line. His favorite play. They scream for him, takes it hard to his right. The fans stand now at the Bradley Center as Marquette has a two-point lead. Downey with the fade away. Oh, boy, what a shot. Oh, man. He drew all the attention, got them off their feet, and still hit the shot. The fade away. Fitzgerald all the way. His first field goal. He didn't score in the UConn game, and Fitzgerald fouled out against the Huskies. Nobody home on help defense there for the Bearcats. Here's James White spinning, shooting, and he'll be on the line. You talk, about the some, deck. you talk about some quickness by James White. James White in the first half has scored eight. But what a physical game we have in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Big East basketball in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. There you see the score. Marquette by two with 320 left in the first half. One of our feature performers at the top of the telecast, number 14, Eric Hicks, has not disappointed. 6'6", 250 pounds, and 100% intimidation. Long arms, block shots right and left-handed. He's got 44 blocks on the season so far, seven points, making outside shots, a big-time competitor. Well, Cincinnati has blocked seven shots, Bob Marquette has five steals. Yep, that's, that's the counteraction right here. This is a discussion about the last play when White got hung up on a screen and his man went all the way to the basket. White wanted Hicks to help. Hicks was not in a position to do so. So a little discussion between those two. Devin Downey turned the ball over early and has come out and played well. Everybody's playing well so far. James White with eight. This guy is an electrifying dunker. Fantastic leaper, started out at the University of Florida, transferred, and has had a wonderful career here. Of course, last year, they had Jason Maxiel playing with them, now with the Detroit Pistons. And of course, Dwayne Wade, a couple of years ago with Marquette, taking them to the 2003 Final Four. So lots of excellent athletes historically, and in this game as well. McNeil explodes to the front court. Novak was open for just a moment, and then Muhammad was looking. Didn't matter, did it? Too small. That's eight for Novak in the first half, giving Marquette a three-point lead. He's three for three. Has not missed a shot. Oh, a spinning steal by Jarrell McNeil. We are seeing some terrific athletes on the floor from both schools today. Kirkland now back on Novak. Small guys cannot guard him. He just shoots right over him. Barrow. Novak throws it down. You have got to be kidding me. Off balance from Cincinnati's bench. 11 for Novak. And Hasn't Novak is four yet. for four. <laughs> Running the floor, spotting up. Muhammad way too small to challenge that shot. Notice Novak's not a standstill shooter. He can do it on the move. And this one from a different area code. And this is what we talked about from Tuesday as we look at our Hyundai Cool Facts. Steve Novak. One of the best performances this year by any player. 41 points. You see Allen Iverson and Murphy, they had 30 in their first games. He beats their debuts big time. The only other guy who's had a better performance this year, Adam Morrison, 43 twice against Michigan State and against Washington. Novak on his way, has not missed a shot in the game. He's four out of four, and three of those have come from behind the arc. And here's Downing. 
splitting defenders and finding James White. White with the lob for Hicks. White for three. And it's a little too strong. And there's Dominique James. One bounce and ahead to Jarrell McNeil. Fitzgerald looking for Novak. Takes it inside. And the basket for Barrow. Usman Barrow's first field goal. Marquette is bringing some room at a 42-34 lead against Cincinnati late in the first half. These teams only played once last year in Cincinnati, and the Bearcats won it. Kirkland with the foul. That's his first. And Marquette is in the one and one as Cincinnati has just committed its eighth team foul. And Marquette is on an 8-0 run, looking for a strong, strong close to this first half at the Bradley Center. Well, this guy has been the unquestioned leader. Watch this action on the rebound. Novak and Kirkland colliding with one another. Bodies on the floor. This is what you would expect with longtime rivals and what you expect in Big East basketball. 66 in a row from the free throw line for Steve Novak. And on our Nissan halftime report, we have the Big East Wire, our Oppenheimer coaches spotlight, of course, first half highlights and stats, and lots to show you in that regard. Ooh, that one <laughs> funneled around and went in for Novak. Number 67 in a row. Not often do you get that collective ooh from the crowd as they did on that free throw. Here's Wire. Oh, and a strong move for James as he has scored 12 in the first half. You see a home court advantage right here. These teams playing toe to toe, but Marquette home game, adrenaline flow for them. That's why they've got the lead right here. Fitzgerald thought about the three. Go back with a nice catch. Here's Usman Barrow with the finger roll, no less. Developmental player shooting 70% from the field because he takes shots like that. Marquette's biggest lead of the first half at 10 points. Hanging and missing the shot, Devin Downey hits. There are some hard fouls going on out here. And to their credit, players keeping their cools after the play. This was a big time rebound. Downey misses, Hicks gets this in traffic with white shirts everywhere, and he is fouled hard by Barrow, who commits his third foul. Hicks a pretty good free throw shooter too, John. 73% from there. Barrow doing a good job in the paint. One and one here for Hicks. Hicks came in as a freshman and a sophomore. A lot of other players doing a great job, and he has become this team leader now. Hicks with the miss on the one and one. Coming down to a half minute left in the first half. Darrell McNeil. Steve Novak. Novak off the back iron. That's his first miss in the first half. 20 seconds to go until halftime. And Cincinnati with the ball trailing by 10. If you're Cincinnati, you want to make sure that you take a shot, and Marquette gets no shot off at all. Dribble penetration against the zone and pitch. Downey for three. And a miss at the buzzer. We play 20 minutes. A physical, athletic first half in this Big East matchup between Marquette and Cincinnati. And Marquette closed the first half with a 12-2 run, covering the last three minutes and 20 seconds. Much to the delight of their student body and Coach Tom Green. It's a 10-point game in favor of the home team in Milwaukee. Welcome in to the Nissan Halftime Report. Coming up, we have our Oppenheimer Big East Coach Spotlight, so stay with us. Report, we played 20 to UConn earlier this week. Welcome back to the Nissan Halftime Report from the Bradley. 12. 
12 points in the first half, but Dominic James was unstoppable. No matter who they put on him, the quickness of this young player got everything involved. He had 14 in the first half. And the big guy, Eric Hicks, seven points, three blocks, a monster in the paint. He even made some shots from the outside. It was inspiring to watch his play. Limited early. Novak came back strong and provided the lift that Marquette needs in the second half. He took five shots, and he's got 13 points, and of course, has not missed a free throw. Marquette closed the first half with a 12-2 run over the last three minutes and 20 seconds to that 10-point lead, you see. We'll have the stats to get to the second half after this. Big East basketball from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. The Marquette Golden Eagles 46, the Cincinnati Bearcats 36. With Bob Wenzel, I'm John Rooney and our first half numbers coach. Well, I'll tell you what, the three-point field goal shooting was pretty even. Points in the paint, oddly enough, Marquette with the advantage there. The blocks have been different, but the steal. So uh, a fa fairly evenly played game. The big story in my mind is Steve Novak. In the first 10 minutes of the game, he had one shot three points in the last 10 minutes he had 10 points he's only taken five shots in the game and he's got 13 points this guy is really proving to be one of the better players in the Big East in his first season and here's our star watch update from the first half the freshman point guards Downey and James and right now the nod goes to number one for Marquette <laughs> no doubt about that Dominic James gets wherever he wants to go on the floor. Big numbers, 14 points, five assists, and he rarely turns the ball over. And he Dominique. is not in the floor. He is no. not on the floor right now. He has had some history with cramping up. He cramped up, didn't play the last seven minutes against UConn. That might be his problem. Dan Fitzgerald is starting in his spot. And here is McNeil blocked inside by James White. And here we go. Off and running, Devin Dowdy blocked on the other end by Dan Fitzgerald. So that's good on one end of the floor, works on the other end. Well, keep in mind, Downey comes from a small town outside in South Carolina. This is a big time arena right here. Even though they're 12 and two, they have not played in this kind of atmosphere yet this season. They'll see plenty of it on the road in the Big East, but this is his first experience. Yes. Here's Downey trying to pass inside, kicked out of bounds by Fitzgerald and 23 on the shot clock. We're just underway in the second half with Marquette leading by 10. Cincinnati can't get away from this game late in the first half. Well, they did and Novak got hot. What Cincinnati needs to do right here, John, is really take advantage of Dominic James not being here. Fitzgerald does a nice job as a 6'9 point guard, but he does not penetrate like, like James does. White looking to create. He was blocked off inside, and Chapman runs it down for the Golden Eagles. Here's McNeil streaking all the way in and blocked inside. That was Hicks leaving his feet and getting yet another block for Cincinnati. That's his fourth. James has uh, James White has three, so seven between them. Kirkland off the miss, and here's McNeil with terrific body control. He has ten today. And Marquette has increased its biggest lead to 12. Well, James is back out of the locker room. We'll see if he goes to the scorer's table immediately or not. They played well in his absence against Connecticut. Hicks blocked and fouled by Ryan Amoroso. Hicks has a knack, obviously, for blocking shots. What he does is he stations himself near the basket and he jumps after the offensive player jumps. And as a result, he does not frequently get into foul trouble. As I mentioned before, in his whole career, he has only fouled out twice. And that's something for a guy who plays as physically as he does. He has missed twice from the free throw line, a 73% shooter. He's not very happy about it as he walks towards center court. Now back to the line. White with 12, Hicks with three block shots, and Kirkland had three assists. When you think of Cincinnati, you think about toughness, and with this group, they are experienced and versatile, although not deep at all. Only nine players, five of them seniors. But Gerald takes it all the way and blocked by Hicks, and there's McGowan fighting off Jarrell McNeil. Come on, Smith! 
Downey through traffic and interrupted by McNeil and a foul call. McNeil, his whistle for his second. Two fouls on Marquette in the second half. And here's number one, Dominique James, the freshman from Richmond, Indiana, in for Dan Fitzgerald. And who was their leading scorer in the first half? Also their leading rebounder. Unusual for a guard. You think about point guards rebounding. Rajon Rondo, Kentucky, had 19 rebounds in a game this year from the point guard position. Point guards should get rebounds because their man is usually back defensively, so they have a clear path. A collision. Chapman hits the deck. That's a three-point attempt that won't go. It's lost it at the end line, and the ball belongs to Cincinnati. Well, there's about 16,000 people in here that disagree with that call. The intensity on the sideline with Mr. Crean. I was going to say 16,001 with Coach Crean <laughs> jumping up. Right here. We'll take a look at it. The value of instant replay. And he makes the free throws. Hicks is a monster in there. Muhammad with the basket. And Muhammad called for the foul. Away from the basketball. Tom Crean wants an intentional foul. Ed Corbett is explaining that Muhammad blocked the path of Dominic James. You want to try to get inside Dominic James' head if you can by being aggressive with him. He's a young player, but really pretty, pretty heady. Off the give and go, yet another block shot. Is White. Wouldn't let anybody come into the lane that time. That's 11 block shots by Cincinnati. Better start consulting the record book, see what their most shot block shots in a game. Kenyon Martin, of course, was great at that during his career here. McGowan denied the entry pass, and Marquette will play it in from that spot on the baseline. Dominique James in the. Here's McNeil. James bouncing it for a pair of dunks. Assist James and the basket by Usman Barrow. Here's Hicks. In traffic. No shot, a foul before he was able to release the shot. That is a bummer when that happens to you. Right here, the pick and roll executed beautifully. Both players go with James. The easy dunk by Barrow. That is how you execute. Notice the bounce pass between the legs of the two Cincinnati players. Stardom written all over Dominique James. And here's the shot by Hicks. He got the basket anyway. Give him 10. Jarrell McNeil went to the bench with three fouls. Fitzgerald who took his spot. Gets the roll and he'll be on the line. The two-lane transfer. The value of being 6'9 in the break. Fitzgerald got in foul trouble in Connecticut. Was not a factor until the end game when he took over ball handling duties. Here getting involved in the scoring. Good balance. Use of the glass to soften the shot. And he missed the free throw, a 75% shooter, 52-41 Marquette. And Cincinnati needs a run. Here's Muhammad, counted. He is so quick and gets his legs under him so well. Fundamentally, one of the better shooters I've seen in the league. And Bob, a few of those, they're right back in the game. Here's Novak trying to lose Armin Kirkland. Here's Barrow taking it in strong on Hicks, who blocked it. Barrow 6'10, Hicks 6'6. Six, six. James. And the ball slapped out of bounds and will go to Cincinnati. Well, the aggression, the aggression at both ends of the floor, personified by Hicks especially, has been remarkably done in this game. Watch Hicks. Three or four inches shorter. Uses the left hand where the right hand shooter is coming. This guy is an educated shot blocker. Ronald Allen, number 23, back in for Cincinnati. Kirkman on the wing. This game has been evenly played other than about three minutes before the end of the first half when Marquette went on a 12-2 run. 
I think Chapman got a hand on the shot, but Cincinnati stays with it. How about Hicks? Keep your eye on Kirkland on Novak, away from the basketball. And that's out of bounds. We have a timeout with 15.41 left in the first half. Or second half, I should say. In the first half, it was a 10-point game for Marquette. But this half, Hicks is trying to scratch and claw Cincinnati's way back into the game. A 52-46 lead for Marquette, but Cincinnati is working its way right back into this Big East men's basketball game. Today's game is brought to you by the best seats for every event. No tickets required. It only happens in one place. Only Vegas. Well, so far, Eric Hicks leading the block parade. Cincinnati has 12. 15 is the school record against Iowa State. Oh, you knew Novak wasn't going to miss that one once Kirkland had cleared Novak's shooting lane. The ball fake very much in evidence. Gets the defense off their feet. The rest is easy, at least for Novak. Hicks trying to split a double team, and a foul is called. And let's see, that's on Barrel, his fourth. Right here, Marquette tries to double-team Hicks. Watch how he slices between the two white jerseys and muscles his way to the basket. Can't put that knee out there like that, can you? I'll tell you what, I mean, he's a hard guy to double-team. Four fouls, Barrel will have to sit. Here's the baseline jumper. Kirkland oh. misses short. Hicks, and that's tapped out to Allen. Travel. If his feet did not leave the floor, it would not have been a travel. Would have been a great ball fake. Would have been. Key words. His feet left the floor. If his left foot had stayed on the floor, that would have just been a pump fake. On the playground, that's not a travel. Unfortunately, this is not the playground. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> this is for real. Novak trying to get some room. Shoots over Kirkland anyway. And the long rebound for Armin Kirkland. Senior from Tyler, Texas. There is no lack of effort going after loose balls in this game. There's Kirkland from the baseline. A lot may have interrupted that shot. May have bothered him. And Novak in heavy traffic needs some help. He gets it. He was trying to draw a foul, but they did not foul him. Nice no call by the officials. Muhammad slaps that shot by James out of bounds. The focus of Novak is very impressive. No matter what happens in the game, he's very much with it. Block number 13 for the Bearcats. This time by Muhammad, the little guy. Dan Fitzgerald to inbound. That one gets past Jarrell McNeil and out of bounds to Cincinnati. What great hustle. McNeil almost kept that inbounds. Talk about a great freshman backcourt. McNeil and Dominique James. You kidding me? Wow. Cincinnati's turned the ball over ten times. That was Marquette's fifth. Near steal by James. Muhammad short, followed a shot, and couldn't score it. Muhammad gets the ball back, and out front it goes. Here's White to the end line. And the tip by Hicks. You talk about determination. Wow. And the pass for Locke, just a little too strong for him from Dominique James. Bad decision by James, a rarity for a freshman. You want to wait until a guy like Locke gets to the basket. Don't give it to him full speed that far away from the basket. And this game has been played about 99% full speed throughout the day. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the hustle and muscle of Marquette in Cincinnati today. 55-48 in favor of the Golden Eagles. And if you want to see some tenacity at the offensive end, watch this possession. Black shirts everywhere. Muhammad gets it among the trees and gets it back out. And what? Cincinnati going after it on the offensive boards, attacking the glass, repetitive jumping, and they come up 
They were down 11 now, only down seven because of the tenaciousness on the offensive boards. Eric Hicks has 14 points, and here's James. Showtime. Fifty-seven forty-eight. Keep that play in mind, folks. Cincinnati has been trying to get back into this game right out of the timeout. They have that kind of play. Barry Sanders and sneakers. This kid is explosive. From the corner, White misses and a line drive rebound for Jarrell McNeil, who's playing with three fouls. Dominique James and Novak. White instead of Kirkland on Novak now. James and Downey, they're out front. Keep in mind, Novak is 6'10". He's like the Energizer Bunny away from the basketball. And he was grabbed. James White picks up his third foul. Novak keeps moving and moving and moving and moving. Dominic James, the anticipation. And showtime for him. That guy's only 5'10". And this is what it looks like from the floor level. He's gone. Here's Fitzgerald missing on the three over the backboard, and Cincinnati has the ball. A nine point lead for Marquette. What a great game to watch, huh? Ancient rivals, personal between them. Leaving Conference USA, coming into a brand new league, the Big East. Think about Cincinnati, really. 14 straight NCAA tournaments. They've won nine of the last 11 regular season titles in Conference USA, and they're picked at ninth in the preseason in this league. He's drawn off the glass for White, but right there is Cedric McGowan. Give him six today. Do they look like a ninth place team in any league to you? No, and Marquette didn't look like it, it was uh, <laughs> no, going to finish as low as yeah, the right. 12th place pick in the preseason poll, beating Utah. Oh, yeah. And there's a 14th block by Cincinnati, and that was Eric Hicks. The spin, and Hicks somehow kept the ball alive, and he will be on the line. Seven block shots for Eric, changing ends of the floor. The single game record for any Cincinnati player is 10. Novak has committed his second foul. And two shots are coming up for Hicks. Hicks is one out of three from the line today. 15 points for him. Well, Chapman comes in and Dominic James goes out for a little rest. He has been a spark for this team. Every time Cincinnati gets close, he makes some kind of play. Steal in a dunk, dribble penetration and dish. But Bob Cincinnati's getting closer and closer. 16 now for Hicks, and it is a five-point ball game. Big East basketball on ESPN Plus. Cincinnati Marquette from the Bradley Center, Al McGuire Court in Milwaukee. I'm John Rooney along with Bob Wenzel. We've had a game played at a breakneck pace. That's out of bounds off Fitzgerald. And a play that was forced by a junior out of Kilgore Junior College, Cedric McGowan. The only time today we haven't seen this game at a breakneck pace. They slowed it down for just a breather in the half court offense. That has been it. They have a five point game. A lot more excitement to come from Milwaukee. We're down to a five point game with 11.58 left in the second half. The home team leads Marquette, and this is Al McGuire Court here at the Bradley Center in Milwaukee. Legendary coach Al McGuire. And in tribute to Al McGuire, Tom Green decided to put his initials on their jerseys, and they will forever be there, he told me, as long as he's the coach here. Al McGuire, of course, passing away several years ago. 1977, they won the national championship under Al, and of course they went to the Final Four in 74 with Coach McGuire as well. Fitting tribute to a great, great basketball coach. Into the lane, the freshman point guard, Devin Downey. Give him seven today, and Cincinnati trails by three. Well, I mentioned they've won nine of the last 11 conference 
uh, championships in the leagues that they participate in, and they have no quit in them at all. And there's a block by Devin Downey. Downey to the front court, out of control, he traveled. Freshman error. A little too excitable was Devin on that particular play. Cincinnati has tied the school record for most blocks in a game, 15. Right here, lots of hands up immediately, and the littlest guy on the floor gets this block. I think two guys blocked it, really. McGowan defensively away from the paint area. A little uncomfortable for him guarding Fitzgerald all the way out there. A lot trying to force the issue inside. That was broken up, and Cincinnati on the steal. The turnover is the eighth for Marquette to 12 for the Cincinnati Bearcats. 11 minutes left in this one. Big East basketball from Milwaukee. In the last six or seven minutes of this game, Cincinnati has been more physical than Marquette. Oh, did you see Kirkland hang and then at the top of his jump, let it fly, and he has nine today. Amoroso waiting to come in, as well as James. Amoroso gives Marquette much more physical presence in the paint. Now it's a one-point game. Ten and a half minutes left, an 8-0 run for the Bearcats. Kirkland just went right through a pick. Look at these double screens he has to fight through to stay with Novak. Darrell McNeil tries to save it in and throw it right to Hicks. Kirkland needs some help. He used up the dribble. And there's Downey to provide that assistance. Almost had a 10-second violation there. Very close. Come on, you guys. Downey passes oh. Gerald and blocked by Lott. Jameel Lott got his hand on it. White, a near steal, out of bounds to Marquette. Now Amoroso is in along with Dominique James. How about Cincinnati blocking shots? School record tying 15 blocks in this game. Everyone getting into the act. Chief among the blockers, of course, Eric Hicks. But White involved, McGowan involved, even Downey gets one. Wow. Back to action now at the Bradley Center. 15 blocks today for the Bearcats, four for Marquette. When you think of block shots in the Big East, you think of Connecticut with a Mecca Okafer, Josh Thorne. They've led the nation three years in a row. McNeil had a good look, and he didn't let it go by. That's a shot for two. Give him 12 today. Fifty-nine, fifty-six. White goes for the tie, and up big and strong, it's Dominic James. Here's James, looking for Amoroso, and stolen by Downey. And Downey missed it. There's Hicks, and he scores. What a follow by Hicks. You talk about a post player running 94 feet. The only guy who chased him down. And wow. Almost as interesting as the action on the floor. The coaches working the sidelines. Here's McNeil. And inside there was terrific rebound position for Hicks. Downey. And the foul is called against Marquette. This is quick on quick. You talk about two freshman guards going after one another in transition. Second Almost foul. Impossible to guard. Right here, Devin Downey. Dominique James tries to take the charge. Looks pretty good. But it goes against him on this one. Six fouls for Marquette out of bounds. Cincinnati's ball. The next Marquette foul will put Cincinnati on the line for a one and one. Devin Downey getting a break on the sideline. Intensely played game for a young guy on the road. They will be on the road again in their next game against the University of Connecticut. I was about to say, Bob, get ready. I mean, get used to it. Yes, every game. And, of course, Marquette's next game will be at the Meadowlands Arena against Seton Hall, Lewis Orr's team. So new venues for both of these clubs. The inbounds pass. A complete shot clock with this possession for Cincinnati. But neither team has needed the shot clock much today. There's Kirkland. See what I mean? Kirkland has come out of his slump, John. 
He was not shooting ball well in the last couple of games, but he is a competitor. He has 11 today, and you see is up by one. Watch now Kirkland off the ball. Does not pay attention to the ball, just focuses on Novak. And McNeil turns it over. That's 11 for Marquette. 11 mistakes. Cincinnati looking to add to a one-point lead here in Milwaukee with 8.15 and counting in the second half. At this juncture, Kennedy decided to go with Muhammad instead of Downey because of his experience. 2-3 zone on the part of Marquette. Cincinnati, the first time they're up in forever. Since 5.42 in the first half. That's it. Muhammad, finger roll, no. Joe Chapman is there in the white shirt for Marquette. Near steal by Moore. Here is McNeil, and White brings it down for the Bearcats. Not much going on on the offensive board right now for the Golden Eagles. Time called by Andy Kennedy and the Bearcats. And Kennedy is animated over there, as you can see. Tom Crean has been pacing the sideline as well for Marquette. That's the shot that put Cincinnati back in front for the first time since very early in the first half. And it came at the hand of one of the most experienced players, Armin Kirkland. A one-point lead for Cincinnati. Kirkland and company huddled around Andy Kennedy his first season. And let's take a look at the upcoming schedules for these two teams brought to you by Advance Auto Parts. For the best parts, people, and price, we're ready in advance. For Cincinnati at Connecticut, no day at the beach. Of course, Syracuse with Jim Beheim and Jerry McNamara and a city rivalry at Xavier and Marquette. At, at, at. That's trouble in the Big East. Oh, it is. Let me correct something. Their first lead since late in the first half at 542. But the last three minutes and 20 seconds really put Cincinnati in a hole as Marquette went on a run for Tom Crean. And that's when Steve Novak got heated up in that first half. But the rest of the game has been played fairly evenly. Last few minutes, obviously, Cincinnati, their tenaciousness has gotten them back in it. Here's White. Muhammad. It rims out. Jarrell McNeil. Dominique James. Marquette is down by one. This is where each possession grows with importance. And it is super important to protect the ball. I'm getting worn out just watching this game. I can imagine how the players are. Fitzgerald and Hicks got oh. a hand on it. That's blocked by Hicks. That was stuffed. Timeout called for Cincinnati as Armin Kirkland was walking the tight line of the sideline by the Marquette bench. Well, Hicks went down right here. His right ankle obviously in pain right here. Eric Hicks rolling around on the ground. Wow. He came from out of bounds on that play, John, to get back in it and make that block shot. Eric Hicks, as physical a player as I've watched in the old Conference USA over the years, now into the Big East. Well, right here, left-handed jump. We don't have, he obviously came down. Let's watch it. Watch his right foot. See if it comes down on anyone else's foot. He goes up for the block. That's exactly yeah. what happened. Turned his right ankle area. He's limping off right now. He's going to be attended to. Obviously, the situation coming back right here. Retape that thing, get it tight so he can get back in the game. He's got eight blocks in this game and 18 points, eight rebounds. What a performance by Eric Hicks. Now, Cincinnati has not been on the road much this year. They played very, very well. Only two losses. They lost to Memphis, it's one of the top teams in the country, and they lost to Dayton, and then beat Dayton on a playback game. 16 blocks, the new school record, and oddly enough, Eric Hitch turns his ankle on the new school record. We haven't seen the last of him for this ball game, though. I ah, just have that feeling. Yeah, yeah. As I soon as he can, he can get that taped, he'll be back on the floor. Hicks has eight blocks. And that is an opponent high for a game against Marquette. McGowan on the wing. This is Moore. Kirkland. 
with the fake and now the shot. Oh, oh I mean Kirkland. <laughs> he's got that line drive thing going, but he's on balance every time he shoots the basketball and he's feeling confident. 14 for him today. Here's Novak. Oh. And he is going to go to the free throw line. Kirkland commits his second foul. Kirkland was right on top of Novak on that play. Got a little piece of the hand. Novak, of course, keep in mind, has not missed a free throw in 67 tries. 6-14 to go in this one. It's Cincinnati's game, at least for now. Second half action, 63-59 in favor of Cincinnati here in Milwaukee. And Big East Conference play heats up next Sunday from ESPN Plus when the Scarlet Knights from Rutgers travel to Chicago to take on the DePaul Blue Demons. Rutgers at DePaul, Sunday, 1 Eastern, noon Central from ESPN Plus. Check your local listings. For Bob Wenzel, I'm John Rooney, and Cincinnati has gone on a run of 15 to 2 over the last 7-14, and it looks like Hicks is going to be able to run again after having the ankle tape. You were right, John. You said he'd be back, take up his ankle, back in there. What you would expect from a warrior like Hicks. And here's Novak. Stoic in his approach is Steve Novak. Talked to him after he had his 41 the other night. And sort of pass the praise around to his teammates, but he is a weapon to be dealt with by every Big East team. And that's a miss for Novak. Novak. 68 in a row, huh, before a miss, or is it 69? Uh, 68. His last miss came in the second half at DePaul, January 20th, 05. Kirkland near steal. And he saved it. No travel. Here's James White in strong and an offensive foul. The fourth on James White. Interesting decision now for Kennedy. Looks like he's going to take White out. And if he does, we've got a diminutive backcourt right now with Muhammad and Downey. Downey about 5'9, Muhammad about six feet tall. The mismatch, of course, right here is Jarrell McNeil with Muhammad. Four inches bigger and stronger. Here's Novak. McNeil with an opening. And blocked by Hicks. Unbelievable shot blocking by Hicks. 17 block shots extending the school record. For Cincinnati, Eric Hicks. What a performance. Not very many of these are easy block shots either. He blocks his own man, he blocks other people. James dumping it low, barrel travel. Intimidation by Hicks. Barrow was not double teamed, had plenty of time. Because of the 17 blocks, you can, you know the players are aware of this. Little hesitation on the part of Barrow right here. And Hicks, of course, does not foul. I don't know many shot blockers that foul as little as he does. Hicks with the shot. Nice arc, and he canned it for two. Can you say first team all Big East in his first season? He has 20 points today. Eric Hicks and a five-point lead for UC on the road. Here's Barrow using the left hand, and he can't score it. Some more of the intimidation you're talking about. The awareness of Cincinnati's block shots today. Well, what Marquette needs to do is pull up a little, not attack all the way to the goal if they can. McNeil, Novak, those kind of players. We have not seen James penetrate much in the last five or six minutes either. Muhammad trying to get free, and that ball's out of bounds. Marquette's ball. And Kirkland was open for just a moment, but they couldn't get in the ball. Well, there's a pick and a pop and a pick and a roll. They should have popped when they picked there. 
Well, let's take a look at our defensive player of the game brought to you by Cooper Tires. Don't give up a thing, and this man hasn't today. <laughs> a career high nine blocks and eight rebounds. Eric Hicks. Pretty obvious. Eric Hicks is the defensive player of the game. There's the matchup I talked about. McNeil can overpower Muhammad. 14 for McNeil. I don't think that Kennedy can leave White out of the game much longer. He's better off playing with White, see if he can foul out and try to maintain the lead. White has four fouls, but little, two little guards at the same time is trouble for Cincinnati. Ahmed Muhammad, Armin Kirkland on the outside. Ten on the shot clock. Hicks in traffic. Novak knocked out of bounds by Muhammad. It's Marquette's ball with the Golden Eagles down by three. And Marquette will have the ball when we come back. And number 21, James White, will be on the court in all likelihood when we return. Today's game has been brought to you by Nissan and your Nissan dealer. By Red Lobster, we do it all for the seafood lover in you. By Oppenheimer Funds, the right way to invest. And by Cooper Tires, proud to be the official tire of the Big East Conference. Cooper Tires, don't give up a thing. Marquette led by 12 early in the second half. And you see what Cincinnati has done, coming back to a three-point lead with 3.25 to go. And they're doing it on a game-changing performance brought to you by Pontiac. Shot blocking, shot blocking, and more shot blocking. <laughs> Keep going. 18 times block shots. Eric Hicks, 10 block shots by himself and 20 points. He has carried the defensive load for this team. And he has been everywhere in the paint. 6'6", 250, but long arms and great shot blocking instincts. Where do you go right here? James and Novak on the pick and roll. Look for Novak to get a lot of screens here. Very important possession right here for Marquette. Chapman splits the pressure. And this is Jarrell McNeil. Size advantage on Muhammad. Nine on the shot clock, and here's McNeil. What body control, what athletic ability, and McNeil has scored 16. Barrow was in his way, and he made the shot anyway. James White needs to be back in the game for Cincinnati. A save by Kirkland. White still on the bench. But he might come back during the timeout. Here's Kirkland getting a step on Chapman. Muhammad. Too strong, and there is Hicks inside for the basket. You have got to be kidding me. Among four white jerseys, not only was the rebound spectacular, the shot without charging was spectacular as well. James White is at the scorer's table. Novak, and that rattles in and out. There's Jarrell McNeil. And in the fight for the ball, Devin Downey. Clears the traffic for Cincinnati with the Bearcats up by three and two minutes to go. Big East basketball. Two nights ago, double overtime, Pittsburgh and Notre Dame. Down to the wire here. Historical rivals trying to run some shot clock right here is Devin Downey. It's 11, he's got to go. Eight on the shot clock. Downey takes the shot and it's short. There's Novak taking the ball away from Muhammad. No timeout by Green. Interesting. They'll go with their execution. The reason he's doing this, he does not want White back in the game. If he called timeout, White could get back in. Without the timeout, now with a foul, White can come in. Kirkland is called for his third foul. Well, you talk about a difficult job of guarding Steve Novak away from the basketball. You've got to fight through screens. And right here, he gets called on this. Oh, he's talking a blocking foul. Could have been a screener as well. That's what Andy Kennedy and Frank Martin want. James White back in. 116 to go. And 16 fouls each way, coach. Devin Downey out. Lack of experience. Novak. He pushed that one up, and here's Hicks to White. Hicks is everywhere. Are there two Eric Hicks, John? Yeah, Man, it seems like maybe it. three. 
One minute left in the game, and timeout called by Cincinnati. Well, there's obviously a difference between shot clock and game clock. So Marquette is not in a situation where they have to foul here. Just play solid defense for 26 seconds. Last possession, Downey took a deep one, which was not a good shot. Let's take a look at our Red Lobster nothing but net shot of the game. Dominique James is 16 points today. In the first half, he anticipated and got the crowd to its feet. The little guy up in the air. Our Red Lobster nothing but net shot of the game from Dominique James. I'll tell you what, we could have a lot of Red Lobster and shrimp or everything else. There's been a lot of shots in this game. <laughs> A lot of fine catches. Our Big East basketball matchup. Cincinnati against Marquette. Al McGuire court at the Bradley Center in Milwaukee. With Bob Wenzel, I'm John Rooney. And this has been action-packed right from the opening tip. 18 block shots today for Cincinnati. And Hicks, who's playing with a very sore ankle. 22 points, 10 blocks, 11 rebounds. A triple-double. That does not happen very often, especially with that many block shots. His balance is remarkable to me. And the fact that he has out only two times as he fouled out in his whole career and involved in the action all the time. Pretty amazing. And he's playing with a painful right ankle. Eric Hicks, a senior from Greensboro, North Carolina. He, he, he sprained that ankle on one of his block shots. I think the 16th block shot they had in the game. He had one block shot in the Big East opener against DePaul in Cincinnati the other night. One possession game right here with three points. Crucial for Cincinnati to get something here. They called the timeout to try to get something. Kirkland has been hot. Chapman is watching Kirkland right now. Here's Muhammad Novak went for the steal. Muhammad scores. Great pull up. Avoid the block. Now it's a two possession game with only 40 seconds to go. Here's Novak. McNeil had the ball scored through his hands like a bar of soap in the shower. They should avoid being fouled if they can. Kirkland gets fouled by Chapman. Wise to stop the clock. That's the seventh foul putting Cincinnati on the line for one and one. 30.5 seconds to go, and Cincinnati's lead is five on the road. Andy Kennedy made an interesting decision. He went with... Kirkland, I, I mean, he went in the second half with Muhammad in the end game because he's a senior. Devin Downey, normally the point guard. And the player justifies the coach's decision. Jihad Muhammad making the greatest shot right there for Cincinnati. Pull up jumper in the lane. When they had to have it. Cincinnati is 11 of 13 from the free throw line. And Hicks is three for five from the line. The only two misses today for the Bearcats. They are third in the nation in free throws at 79%. And a wow. miss by Kirkland on the front end of a one and one. James is fouled by Muhammad. Wow. That's wow. four on Muhammad, and that puts Marquette on the line for one and one. A chance to score with the clock stopped. You said it right. That's going to make Andy Kennedy lose some of the hair that he's got left. Right here, silly foul. He knows it. Nice hesitation move. He draws the foul. Now, Dominique James is not a great free throw shooter. 63% on the season so far. One timeout left for Cincinnati, two for Marquette, and not much time left in regulation, 25.8 seconds. Interesting that you said in regulation. Are you anticipating overtime? Uh, you never we know. We may have it. You never know in this league. Not with the way the week has been passing along here, opening up Big East play. Dominic James, two for two so far in this game. Three for three. From seven points, seven assists against UConn. 17 points today for James, 14 in the first half. Kennedy is yelling, press attack, press attack. He knows that they're going to be pressed right here. Just reminding his guys to get organized. A three-point game with 25.5 seconds to go and a foul on Fitzgerald. Well, this game is far from over. A missed free throw from being over. 
Andy Kennedy wanted the clock to run a little bit. Novak, the three-point shooter, certainly is going to be dangerous here. Kirk Kirkland will be all over him. Downey back in the game for Muhammad for defensive purposes and also the fact that Muhammad has four fouls. He doesn't want to get him a fifth at the defensive end. Now Tom Crean has taken a timeout, one timeout each way with 24.6 seconds to go. Marquette built a 46-36 halftime lead, then up to 48-36 early in the second half, only to have Cincinnati use its shot-blocking ability to create so many problems in the lane for Marquette and bring the Bearcats back to a lead on the road. Well, there's only one timeout left for either person. And Eric Hicks, the personification of Cincinnati basketball. You look at him, you see Kenyon Martin, you see Jason Maxiel, you see the undersized post guys that play with great heart and physical. This Hicks certainly in a long line of Cincinnati players that plays that way. Well, you know this, Bob, that that ankle's sore now. What's it going to be like in the morning? Well, he's going to have ice on a uh, guarantee you're right. You, you're as right. soon as this game is over. James White shoots 88% from the free throw line. And he is two for two today. White has scored 12 points, five rebounds and two assists. He missed it. Chapman with the rebound. Plenty of time. Dominique James. And timeout called by Tom Green. They work on this at the end of practice every day, don't they? Absolutely. The end game situations, time and clock situations. You need a three. Likely candidates, Novak, Chapman. You know that Novak is going to be guarded tightly. Boy, this was so close to a bonus for James White, but rimmed out to Joe Chapman. How about an 88% free throw shooter missing one right there? I'll tell you, those things in the background would make me dizzy. How about Novak missing a free throw after hitting 68 in a row? The longest streak in the history of Marquette basketball, an illustrious history at that. And Novak, Marquette's all-time free throw percentage leader at 93%. Missed his first free throw since January 20th of 05, the second half against the DePaul Blue Demons. Well, you're down three. Now you get a three or an attempt at a three, and if you miss, you foul immediately. Or if you're played tightly, you drive to the basket, make the two, and call an immediate timeout. Three point shooting in the game today. Dominic James, two for four. Novak, four for seven. The rest of the team, a goose egg. If I'm Cincinnati, I'm switching every screen. You cannot afford to give Novak any light whatsoever. If he gets free on a screen, it is going up. I'll guarantee you that. Novak is inbounding the ball. After he inbounds, look for them to screen for him. Cincinnati playing it soft until the ball comes inbounds. Now 14, 13. Novak off the Fitzgerald screen and the switch. Nice switches, nice switches. McNeil takes the shot. And they won't get a second chance at it. There's a foul. And Muhammad will go to the free throw line with one second to go. Well, Andy Kennedy did a magnificent job of defending that last shot. He and Frank Martin on the sideline had the timeout. They know that Novak's getting it. Watch all the switches, the hands up everywhere. Challenging shots, good hustle. Great defense by the Bearcats. They knew they had to defend the three-point line. Three people on Novak. And McNeil got a pretty good look. But not to be today. What an interesting situation for Andy Kennedy. Bobby Huggins gets fired. He was his assistant and recruiting coordinator. Takes over the team. 12 and 2 coming in here. Muhammad with another free throw coming. Game's over. That's it. Four point game. Andy Kennedy. Cincinnati Bearcats. 13 and 2. 2 and 0 in the Big East. And you can thank Eric Hicks shot blocking in this one.
Well played game by both teams. Cincinnati rebounded from a 12 point deficit to win by four on the road at Marquette 70 to 66 and congratulations for Andy Kennedy his first season at UC and a tough loss for Marquette after having a 12 point lead early in the second half. Well there was no emotional breakdown Dominique James and his teammates Steve Novak and the rest great win against Connecticut and come back here in a home game. No letdown their intensity was good but Eric Hicks was the difference today. A four point win for Cincinnati 70 to 66 and a big day for Hicks at 22 points 12 rebounds double figures and blocks shots and Cincinnati improves to 13 and 2 Marquette drops to 11 and 3. This has been a presentation of ESPN.